You know, the women's match actually went longer than the men, men's match once the uh, match beyond. I'm sorry. Once one minute longer. games have begun. Yes, one minute longer. None of them needed to go that long. No, they did not. This no. this needs to be uh, it needs to be submit or surrender. Yeah. Which, by the way, they kind of they kind of did. They they explained that if you leave the cage, your whole team loses. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I guess that's a surrender. That makes sense. Uh, that Just... for a coward, that makes sense. But you know, my, one of my biggest things to come out of this whole thing was the press conference with Triple H, and at least the first, to my knowledge, public admission that hey we may be looking at a lot of this stuff and that we do actually acknowledge what people are saying out there about these events because he's exactly right war games does not have to be a set fixed event it needs to be something that somebody can pull out and use when they need to something that's big something that's major you can still sell war games sets for kids and collectibles and for you know all that you could still do that all year long, but you don't have to have the match. And if they're looking at, seriously looking at how they decide to do Survivor Series, whether it remains a War Games event every, you know, I, I doubt it will be, although that's come up. I guess they're looking at that. But Money in the Bank, the Elimination Chamber, all of these things, you can sell the play sets and you can merchandise the hell out of it all year long, but you don't actually have to have a set time to do this stuff because it's crazy to me. And frankly, with Survivor Series, if you're not going to go back to five on five, get rid of it and come up with a completely new concept because that's really what it should be. And there should never be an issue having a bunch of people on your roster involved in feuds and involved in angles where they could be put together for the traditional five on five team. So I really do hope they're looking at all that stuff because this was a great example of you're doing war games because you put a hat on a hat with Survivor Series. And yeah, it mixed it up a little bit for Survivor Series, and that was cool. But as we saw, especially with the women's match, all the plunder that was in the ring before the thing even got started, it's like, what are we doing here? What exactly is this match really anymore? Well, here's my thoughts. I believe that uh, we were talking about Survivor Series on the show with Dave, and I said, why don't you just rename it War Games? There wasn't even one Survivor Series match in the show. And he goes, well, you know, I think they don't want to drop it because of tradition. <laughs> it's like, so they want the tradition of the name, but not the tradition of actually doing Survivor Series matches. The Finn Balor-AJ match could have very easily been a Survivor Series elimination match. And the other thing is, yes, you, you, War Games can be at any point during the year, or it can be every November. It doesn't matter. It's not like Hell in a Cell, he, he claims because you'll always have feuding factions. But to me, what I think they should do is, and they're not going to do this, I don't think we need to have a men's war games and a women's war games on the same show. I don't think that we need to have a men's Royal Rumble and a women's Royal Rumble on the same show. Now, why do we? Because, well, equality. Okay, I have no problem with equality, but here's my point. If, if War Games is so cool and so much fun and everything like that, how about you have a War Games at one point during the year for the men, and at another point during the year, you can have a War Games for the women? They don't need to be on the same show. So Survivor Series can be Survivor Series. You have one Survivor Series match if you want to keep the name. Otherwise, why even bother keeping the name? Either the men's or the women's, it doesn't matter. And then whatever else you have on the show. And then maybe it's April. And WrestleMania is over, and you've got your backlash show. It's like, we just got a bunch of rematches. There's nothing all that special about the show. Well, you know what? Put a Women's War Games match on the show. Have it be there. And you can do a Royal Rumble for the men in January. I guess you can do both if you want to, but that's two long matches, dude. And they're, they're very repetitive. No, but don't I don't want to see. Nobody wants to see a Royal Rumble, second Royal Rumble, just to have one to have equality. I mean, part of this whole thing is you're doing another piece of business. So to move war games and to have a woman's war games or a men's war games at a different time of the year, that makes sense to me, especially with the way they go to Saudi Arabia or if you're going to India or wherever. If they're going to continue to expand touring and want to have big shows in big places and big premium live events, at those big shows then 
you know, I I can absolutely see them doing that. I think Royal Rumble needs to be contained for one show, though. I don't think you're going to do Royal Rumble 2 and have it work anywhere, whereas you can absolutely do War Games and still get some mileage out of that one, I think. I think that, to me, to do that with Royal Rumble, I really think that's throwing everything a little bit too far off. Well, maybe, but uh, they always have a uh, Saudi show in, like, February. Always. So they always want to have something big for that show. I guess maybe it wouldn't really work to put the women on the Saudi show, now that I think about it. But, you know, that's my idea. You have a men's Royal Rumble in January, and you have the women's Royal Rumble in February. Maybe not in Saudi. But if they're going to India, you could have it in India. And then the winner of that goes on to WrestleMania or whatever. You might as well just have, like, one of those Royal Rumbles on TV then. You know? Great! I'm fine with that. I would be totally fine with a TV Royal Rumble. A Raw or a SmackDown or something like that to me. That would be the last big thing you do coming out of it. Or maybe the next night. I guess if you're going to do an idea like that, that may give you an idea to do for that Monday because you still come out of the weekend with two competitors to have a choice of what they want leading into WrestleMania. So, I just think they have all of these international shows. You can save a War Games for one of those shows. You could have the women's TLC on one of those shows instead of having two TLC matches on the same night. Just feels, I always watch the two matches, and it's always overkill. Every single solitary time. I feel all of these shows would be better with just one. It is, but I tell you, they they do, to me, with War Games and Hell in the Cell both, and they obviously have more reverence, Triple H does certainly, for Hell in the Cell, so they're going to protect that one more. But we've talked about this, I mean, we talked about it a million times with Ryback and CM Punk, talked about it a million times during the heyday of Impact. You book yourself into a corner because you're booking into themed to pay-per-view months and you don't have the story that goes along with that same thing with like tlc and they go ahead and they shoehorn a bunch of stuff into it again i understand the branding and the marketing but there's got to be a a better balance here sometimes when it comes to these shows and how do you how you utilize all these gimmicks the wwe legendary joke Joke book book. why do wwe superstars fingers hurt (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Why were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. yep. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. <laughs> Glamazon. That's what I said! (laughs) You said Gramazon. No, I said Glamazon. (laughs) There should be a Gramazon. (laughs) Yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.